everybody, welcome to another episode of Ordnance Overview. Today we're going to be going over the M81 Fuse Igniter. Um, can go by a few different names, but I usually just call them a M81 Fuse Igniter. Now these are a newer version of the M60 Fuse Igniter that you might see some collectors have. Uh, the biggest difference, or the only real difference, is that these can light uh, old school timed fuse, or they can use the newer shock cord, which uh, is instantaneous. So that's a little nicer for if you're doing blasting work or uh, breaching or something like that, where you want to, um, or even uh, setting off a claymore or something like that, where you don't want a time delay. Uh, this tan color is. Um, kind of newer I guess uh, I got the I got a bunch of these in um, wasn't sure what I was exactly getting these are factory made inert versions this one's a used uh, live version most of the lettering came off it was that, you can see that yellow color right there but you can see it's a little more of a green plastic where this is the newer tan version uh, you can find used ones of these on gun broker used live ones uh, these were on gun broker as well for a short time but I got these from uh, Mast Technology, same guys who make chalk rounds for the 40 millimeter. I got a whole bunch of them. I got a good deal on them. I'm not sure what they're selling for now. But let's go ahead and uh, take this part and see how they work. So this green plastic piece down here is called the shipping plug. And then this uh, clear rubbery part, um, that's what kind of holds your fuse in place uh, or shock cord, depending on what you're using. We'll move this one out of the way since they're inside they're basically identical the only real difference is since this is a factory made inert round um, I'll show you the quick little difference but it's not much now in here if I can get them out so in here there's these wedges and that is so when you let me see if I can focus that a little bit better there's those green plastic wedges in there around the shipping plug and the rubber uh, collar part and those are for when you screw this down, they squeeze together like a clamp and hold your fuse or shock cord in place. Um, if you take a pick or something, you can get them out. But it's just two pieces of plastic uh, forming a cone. So we have a plastic washer here. Here's another uh, rubber spacer. We'll kind of keep these in order if we can. And then inside here, another smaller plastic washer. And then this right here. As you can see, it's just a solid piece of plastic. Doesn't look like much, but what this looks like on the live version is a lot more like this. This one I modeled after the one out of this live one, which unfortunately I lost. But this normally this line isn't here. This was kind of a bad print, but this is your primer holder. This is what actually ignites the fuse. Now this depression right here is for holding a primer. It's the same size as a small pistol primer, but it's less powerful. You do not want to use a full power small pistol primer or um, small rifle primer. It's the same size, but you want to use a weakened primer. And you can do that by disassembling a primer and taking some of the, I believe it's lead azide, but whatever the primer compound is, take some of that out. Um, the exact amount I'm not gonna tell you. I don't exact. I don't know exactly for sure, and that'd be a heck of a liability on my part. But as you can see, it hits the primer will be struck, and the blast travels down that hole and out this end. And then there's some expansion grooves here to let the gas expand. But that butts up against this uh, right here, this uh, washer, and your fuse will be or shock cord will be at the end here. So it uh, directly ignites it just like that. Now looking in there, you'll see the striker and a washer for it. Um, on this end, we have a safety pin, pin kind of like a grenade uh, grenade pin. Let me pop that out. Sheesh, I forgot how tough these were. All right, comes out pretty easy. Let's see if I can unscrew this end to show you the rest. So it's kind of a interesting way these work basically what in function i'll show you that real quick you'll pull the pin and then you'll push this in to make sure it's ready to go and then what you do is you just pull this 
There it goes till it snaps. And there's a spring and a striker in here. That was an easy way of getting out. And this is what sets off the primer. You can see it's basically a firing pin there. And when you pull this back, now we can take this apart. Should be able to. Oh, this one's a little bit different. So when you pull this back, this pin in here has like a ball on the end. So when you shove it in, what it's doing is it's locking in this kind of socket here. And it locks in there. And then while you pull it back, it's pulling this back until it hits the end and it can't take it anymore. And it releases this striker. The striker comes flying forward, hits the primer, lights your fuse, and you're off, you know, off to the races. So in practice, when the military uses these, typically if you're a sapper, blaster, um, EOD type, you're going to use two of them every time. Um, you always want to double fuse, but that's not always the case. These um, now come with, as part of the kit with Claymore mines. So you don't necessarily, so I believe they come with just one of them, uh, but if it didn't work, you could just pop a new one onto the shock cord and try again. If you're setting, you know, if you're setting off a detonation and you're, it's something like this where you're leaving it behind and you're not going to be holding it in your hand, a time diffuse application, you typically want to use two of them because if one fails, you don't want to have to go back and pick that up and mess with it. Um, it could have been a problem with the fuse or whatever. So. We're going to take this outside. These are just cardboard tubes just for fun. Um, but I'm going to show you how this works. And uh, that'll be all. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments. If you have one of these, cool, let me know. Um, if you want the file for that little primer holder, hit me up in my email. I'll send it to you. But have a good one. See you next time.